Oh man, I got so much going on right now, guys. Welcome back. I have a, a new addition to the shop. I think just one, I don't know. But uh, I've been working on it today. Just finished my work day, but I've got a new yard tractor. Uh, this one here is a um, Cub Cadet International Harvester built um, 129 Hydro. Picked this up at the junkyard nonetheless. I was there getting some parts for another project, which I'll show you guys. And um, this was sitting there amongst all the other tractors. And um, I saw it, I'm like, hmm, okay. And so I know a couple of people at the, at the salvage yard pretty well. And so I took a picture of it and I'm like, hey, how much, you know, for the tractor? Um, I'm not, should I even say? Well, I'm not going to say where I bought it from. So I paid 40 bucks for it. Um, I hooked up a battery to it today to kind of see what, if anything, she will do. You see the battery sitting there, still working on it. Um, it's pretty much complete in terms of all of the pieces and parts all that stuff everything's freed up i've already checked the the deck and checked the the hydro and um uh, the, the throttle cable is the only one that's disconnected so i had to uh or i have to rather um get that done i got a pretty busy day i just got a text from my brother-in-law asking me if i got his motorcycle tire so i gotta go do that because we gotta install that this afternoon um but yeah so i gotta it looks like this one here is pretty good it's got a newer belt on it uh the wiring ain't all like um you know rigged up in such a way that makes me concerned it looks pretty straightforward i mean there's not a whole lot look who's showing up late to work shop cat and you do you always showing up late to work but anyway everything looks fairly complete on it um and it is free what's up dude and um so we're going to be working on this guy here. You may ask, like, what happened to the other one? The other one's still in there. I got parts that are getting sandblasted because that's something I can't do. So they're out for that type of work. Um, this one here is fairly, like, the paint job on it is not bad in such a way that I don't know that I'm going to really do very much to it. I was thinking about doing the grill and the hood because they're, they seem to be the worst. But then again, I don't know. Maybe if I clean it up really good, put some new decals on there, it'll look pretty cool for its age. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be a lawn tractor, right? It's going to pull stuff and move stuff and basically sit for the majority of, us, of the summertime. Now, one other thing here, and I hate to show you because I got a bunch of crap in the back of my bed, but I also picked up a plow with it. So it came with the plow, came with all the other attachments. And that is an international harvester plow. And I'm telling you guys, this stuff is built like to last. Like, look at the look how thick the metal is on a lot of this stuff. Um, if you're out, if you're one of those kind of guys that runs out to Home Depot or Lowe's to buy a, a, a yard tractor, I hate to tell you guys, but you're going about it the wrong way. I mean, this thing is solid built. Listen to this. That's thick metal, nice heavy gauge metal. Um, and I don't know what year this is. I'll have to get the tag and see if I can look it up and determine what year. But um, there's a tag right there. And I'll have to run that number and see if I can determine a year on it. But um, yeah, she's she's all there. So, But yeah, if you're one of those kind of guys that are going out buying something brand new, I mean, you're getting shafted because this old girl here, man, she's built the last. Um, and she's been, she's, you know, I, I assume it's a, a seventies model. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's all there, all complete. Everything's free. It rolls, it moves. So I'm not complaining too much. It's going to be a nice little summer project. Uh, when I'm not out riding the hog, uh, we'll be in the barn working on this. So moving on allergies are starting to kick up just like always. The next project I bought was from my wife. She wanted another one of these XC90s. Uh, we've had three or four of them in the past, uh, or Volvos in general. And uh, and so we picked up this guy here for a song. I paid 600 bucks for it. Had some misfiring issues. Got it home, realized that the, uh, the wires leading to the coil packs were all corroded. And basically the, the copper was hanging on with the thread. 
and uh and so i started playing around with a lot of the copper wiring just to kind of get it to you know get connected i guess if you will and uh yeah and that and that seemed to get the, the the rough idle situation taken care of for the most part so now what do you say so am i going to leave it like that no i've got a wiring harness actually sitting over there in my truck and so all i have to do is this weekend is i'm going to come out here i'm going to strip all the wiring off of it reconnect everything solder everything in, do it the proper way and then get her running i went and got a new headlight because it's, it's a used vehicle it's not brand new but it's for her business so she can run around and do her book auctions and all that kind of stuff but i got a new headlight because it apparently had been a little bit of a fender bender so i got a new headlight got that installed i put a new fog lamp in right there got that installed it needs um cleaning all that kind of stuff but it needs uh, a new rim, which my buddy at the same salvage yard has another one of those rims. So I just got to go and pull it off the vehicle. He ain't going to help me. He's going to give me an awesome price for like $10 or whatever. And then I'll have to pull it myself, which, but I love doing that. But everything else on it is, is straight. It's a Colorado vehicle. It came out of uh, Colorado. They, the folks moved here. Uh, and then before that, it was owned by an older couple in Florida. So it's basically lived a pretty decent life. And uh my wife is she already has another car anyway and we've got other other vehicles so this would just be her going to town rig so all right um the little john deere 160 uh we got the john deere 160 running me and my boy did we came out here and started playing around with all the wiring we figured out all the wiring we basically had to back probe and test and put the uh multimeter and i mean we were for out here for hours one night just kind of tracking all the wiring because it's just got a, a briggs and Str is that briggs and stratton i think it's a briggs 15 5 horsepower in it which is not the engine that would have came in it and so i had to turn around and figure out how the idiots wired it up in order to get everything figured out and get the wiring cleaned up so i've got it all identified now i need to strip it all out and replace it with new wire heavier gauge wire better quality wire versus that 10 or uh, aluminum coated stuff I, mean, I don't put that on anything i work on so we put straight up copper in it and it runs great but i start i drove it around today um me and the boys were out playing and uh they were enjoying it and loving it and so uh, that's one more thing off the off the list my zero turn oh i guess i'll show you this one real quick my blade for my larger tractor i've got that repair now so i've got the new um three-point hinge on there so that's all installed everything's good to go on that on here there's a big gaping hole down there which because i hit a rock this is property is still new for me i thought i had identified all of the landmines but apparently i had not and so that resulted in me having to go out and order new equipment because i broke the the spindle shaft for the the blade so i got to get this guy installed today uh which i'm going to be doing right now because it's getting later in the afternoon and, and uh yeah so go ahead and knock that out but first i got to cut out all the bolts in here and because when it broke everything was already seized up anyway uh and so i got to cut all the bolts out and uh go from there so that's what i'm going to do now and uh yeah i'll yeah so that's that's pretty much it uh, I may do a video on that. I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm going to post this. I'll kind of see what people say. I may still record it. Um, and then if people leave in a comment section on this video that they like, that they want to see it, then we'll do it. Uh, I picked up a little Ford grill. I like that grill. I actually saw a tractor of this model that, at the salvage yard that's sitting there just kind of waiting for somebody to come along and pick it up and restore it. So I think we're going to grab it and bring it home and shove it up in the, the upper uh, upper section of the barn and let it sit. And then we'll get around to it at some point in time uh lastly just kind of defeating you guys everything here i got the cobalt sockets out of the tray this is that cobalt usa i think it's built by armstrong i got four sockets left i got to go back to walmart and get some of these cheap socket rails i still have oh actually no i'm that's a lie i ordered the new trays and everything for this drawer so we have all new trays going in here um we're starting with the metric site first no, actually, it's metric NSE. It comes with both of them. Um, and we're going to start getting everything all broken down and reorganized. So that's going to be a treat. That's going to be awesome. We will be doing a video on that. Um, and then I got the Armstrong sockets actually on these cheaper hyper tough trays now. 
uh, or rails. That was pretty cool. I'm glad I did that. Uh, these are all 12 point, but they're deep throat 12 points. I shouldn't probably say that. Um, but they're USA made. And so um, I was happy about getting them. I like Cobalt USA stuff. Some stuff was built by Armstrong for Cobalt, whereas others were built by Williams, which is obviously Snap-on, a subsidiary of Snap-on. So uh, that being said, you can get yourself some really good tools if you buy uh, our Cobalt USA. Um, I think those were only two manufacturers in the U.S. that built stuff for them, I, be I believe. I could be wrong. Somebody will probably correct me in the comment section. I also got the uh, 12 point, um, these are both metric, um, but this is the shallow and the deeps. And then I thought I had, oh, I do somewhere, where are they at? Oh, here they are. And then I didn't have a full set of the deeps and shallows in the SAE, but I do have some. Um, and so I've got them installed on, these, on this rail here. And then I've got a few more left over. I believe they're also, yeah, these are also SAE. And so we'll get these cleaned up and get some more of those rails and then we'll migrate them over. I'm just essentially going to add some more anvil pieces here uh, and then we'll have all four of them there. So uh, socket collection grew just a little bit, just a weensy bit. I was trying to find a Capri tool, shout out to Capri tools, uh, and get myself um, the half inch drive version of these. These suckers are stout. I love them. Um, I use them a lot on that Volvo out there, on the one at the salvage yard, actually, getting some of the parts. I was going to do a video at the salvage yard, decided not to do it. Um, so it was just getting late. I only had a couple hours to get the job done um, because I have to work during the day. And then as soon as I get done at work, I'm hot heading to Fort Wayne. And then I have to go and do all my, my picking there. Unless it's a weekend and I have more time. So I've got a couple different projects i got to work on here. Um, I'm going to start working on them today. My brother-in-law will be home, I think, in like an hour. And then I'll have to pack up my toolkit and then head over to his house. Last thing before I jump off here, guys, I made the epic fail. And I'm going to tell you guys about it because I'm, be, I'm trying to be transparent. Is I went to the salvage yard. And you guys know my salvage yard, Ben, is pretty fantastic. It's probably one of the coolest setups for a salvage yard bin that's on YouTube, um, especially for a DIYer. We've got everything in that bin. You guys, if you haven't seen what's in this bin, go check out my previous video where I did a full tour. Um, it's a military grade box and I did a full tour of that bin. So hopefully you guys will like that. But anyway, I went to the salvage yard. I was pulling parts. I was all on the ground, getting dirty, sun's going down, trying to rock it out. The next thing you know, I was heading home. I got the uh, IH on the back of the truck. I'm cruising down the road, listening to some meat, some music. And I thought, I was like, wait a minute, where's my Ulta Tools pry bar? And I'm like, mm, maybe I put that back, but maybe I didn't. So I had left the Ulta Tools indexing pry bar. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I left it there uh, sitting there underneath. I almost forgot what I did. I left it there on the car. It was actually holding up the hood. I remember there was a, tr a truck that I was working on, and I used this as a, a hood latch. And I put this on there, a ho hood prop, and I had it sitting there, and I forgot about it. So that was left there at the salvage yard. Now, when I left, they weren't closed yet. They were getting ready to close, but weren't closed yet. So I, I dropped off the stuff, told my wife, hey, I got to go back. What made it even worse is my son had a softball or a, a baseball game, so I had to hurry up, get there, get back, and be ready for his, his baseball game. Also left a quarter-inch drive snap-on ratchet um, underneath the car, sitting right in the sun, gleaming like new money, and I didn't even realize that until I got in there and I looked down and I saw it. I'm like, holy crap, dude. I left like, I don't know, like $160 worth of tools laying on the ground, so... Yeah, I see why guys buy cheap tools, and that's what they use for the salvage yard. I almost had a heart attack when I realized that I had left it. But we went back. We got it. Everything was still sitting where I left it. No one had went down the, the Volvo road for a reason. <laughs> and, uh, and I was able to get my stuff back. So that's pretty cool. Well, that's all I got for today, guys. Oh, the last thing here. I shouldn't say that. The last thing. I'm sorry. I'm rambling on. I don't talk to you guys that much, right? I don't do live streams because everybody else does live streams. And then next thing you know, they're bitching and moaning because you're doing a live stream at the same time they do a live stream. And then I don't feel like doing all that stuff because I'm not like everybody else. I've been a cussed out your mama and, and called, called her all kind of names if you come at me like that. So <laughs> I'd just rather not do it. But I got um, 
I got this this motorcycle jack, and my buddy at the at the salvage yard he had it, and he was like, "Oh, I was like, how much you want for that jack, dude?" And he was like, "Oh man, I'm gonna keep that." I'm like, "What you gonna use it for?" He's like, "Oh, I'm gonna put my go karts on it or something. I don't know. I think he races go karts, and he was gonna put the go kart on here." And uh, hang on a minute, let me see if I can do this without. Oh, there you go. Um, he was gonna put his go kart on here, and I'm like, dude, like. I'll take it, man, if you want to sell it. And he's like, oh, well, I paid 10 bucks for it. Now, whether that was true or not, that's what he said. And I'm like, well, um, I'll, how about doubling your money? So he's like, yeah, I'll do that. So I gave him 20 bucks for it. And uh, it works. It works. So everything works on it. So now I got a motorcycle jack, something I did not have before. And I now got one called Torin Big Red Jacks, made in China. So there it is. <laughs> but that'll be good for the uh, the old Victory. We need to get her off the ground. Actually, we're probably gonna need to use it. I may need to take that with me today because we got it. Well, I do because we've got to put the uh, the tire on my brother's bike. So. Uh, he doesn't have a jack, so we're going to be using that today. Like, literally within the next hour or so, we're going to be using this. So, yeah, not a bad pickup for 20 bucks, I don't think. So, all right, Shop Cat, you want to tell him anything, buddy? Huh? Nothing? Okay, he said no. But uh, that's all I got for you guys. Uh, I'm going to get working on this one here. Like I said, I may record it, and then we'll figure out if we're going to release it. All right, catch you in the next one. Peace.